Okay, welcome to the video on glycolysis and anaerobic respiration. Um, if you have a sheet of paper to hand, that will help you a lot. And just follow along as we go through uh, explaining the process step by step. First up, remember that glycolysis is the first step in respiration. It takes place in the cytosol. Not in the mitochondria. Okay, it's really important that it takes place, that you understand it takes place in the cytosol, not the mitochondria. Glycolysis is the first step in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration, but this video will not explain the next two stages. They will come in later videos. Anaerobic respiration, remember, means without. and aerobic means oxygen. So anaerobic respiration we'll look at as well as glycolysis. First though we're going to look at glycolysis which as I say starts both processes. These begin with a molecule of glucose. This is a similarity between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. They both begin with glucose. Glucose is a six carbon molecule, as you'll remember from its equations, C6H12O6. Now, those carbons are normally arranged in a circle, but I'm just doing them in a straight line to help you visualize them. These are reacted with a series of enzymes to form two three carbon molecules. This process requires energy in the form of ATP. Two molecules of ATP, hang on, let me zoom in a little so you can see this clearly. Two molecules of ATP are used to allow this to happen, and they're broken down into two molecules of ADP, like so. Now, this is a bit strange, we're supposed to be uh, carrying out respiration to release energy. And it's funny that that first step requires energy to be put in in order to start the breakdown of glucose. You don't need to know the name of this uh, three carbon intermediary, but know then that this goes through a series of other reactions to form a different three carbon molecule, two of these, and these you do need to know the name of these are pyruvate molecules. This series of reactions releases energy. Now, it releases energy in two forms. One is in the form of ATP. Four molecules of ADP are transferred into four molecules of ATP. Remember, ATP is the cell's favorite energy currency. It provides just the right amount of energy for lots of different reactions in the cell to take place. At the same time as, as this, we also have high energy electrons being picked up by a high energy electron carrier. Now we've come across one before called NADP. Well, this is not photosynthesis, this is respiration. And in respiration, it, the um, main electron carrier is NAD plus, okay? It's very common that students get these two mixed up. Um, so be careful, if there's a P present, it's photosynthesis. The NAD plus is transformed into the high energy electron carrier NADH. So what we have here is the basic process of glycolysis. Okay, this is glycolysis. That's all you need to know about glycolysis. Taking in glucose, breaking it down into two three carbon molecules. It requires two ATPs at the start, but then it makes four ATPs and some NADH. I think it actually makes two NADHs, so I should put that in too, shouldn't I? Now, 
one thing that it's important to understand is while we put some energy in to start this reaction, we got more energy out. Okay. We lost two to start with, but we got four back. So we have, I'm just going to write this over here, a net gain of two ATP. Minus two plus four gives us two ATP. And this is all the ATP that you're going to get with anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration, that's respiration with oxygen, will get a lot more between 38 and th 36 and 38 molecules of ATP in total. But anaerobic only gets two. This is an important difference between the two types of respiration and explains why it's so important to us to get lots of oxygen and so the energy we need. In aerobic respiration, pyruvate will be taken into mitochondria. And in the mitochondria, it will undergo the reactions of the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain to produce lots of um, ATP. So this is our mitochondria. Mitochondrion, really, if it's one of them. So this is where the Krebs cycle happens. This is where um, the electron transport chain takes place. This is moving on to aerobic respiration. But as the name implies, there has to be oxygen present. Okay. This can only happen if oxygen is there. The fundamental major difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration is whether or not oxygen is present. If oxygen is present, then it's great for the cell. We can release lots of ATP between 36 and 38 molecules of it. If it's not present, we can only get two molecules of ATP, a lot less. However, it's not quite as simple as that for anaerobic respiration. You see, this reaction cannot continue if there's no NAD+. So we need some way of regenerating this NAD+, and turning it back into NAD plus from NADH. Now normally, in, when there's oxygen present, this NADH is going to go down here, if oxygen is present, into the mitochondria and used as a source of energy. But it can't do that if there's no oxygen present. So we have to make this NAD plus again, and there's two different ways of doing this. Animals and some bacteria have got a different strategy to plants and fungi. We're going to talk about um, animals first. This is what they do um, to carry out this step here. They convert pyruvate into a different substance called lactate. Sometimes lactate is known as lactic acid. You may have heard that of that before, as the substance that hurts your muscles um, and builds up in them. Uh, there's some studies now that are showing that it's not actually lactic acid that causes long-term uh, muscles to ache in the long term, um, but it probably has something to do, uh, a small amount to do, um, certainly the generation of the lactate with um, that pain you experience. So this is what happens in animals. And as I say, some bacteria. This is known as, I'm going to turn this on its side, lactic acid fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation. In plants, 
and fungi, they take a different approach. They produce not one compound, but two. They produce carbon dioxide and ethanol. Ethanol is a form of alcohol, and we use this process to produce alcoholic drinks. Remember, this is done by, uh, this is in plants and fungi. Uh, so this form of fermentation happens again when no oxygen is present. If oxygen is absent, you're going on one of these two routes. And in plants and fungi, they produce carbon dioxide and ethanol. We often manipulate this process by putting uh, plants um, or fungi into a um, sealed container. We'll have our sugars and um, fungi, maybe yeast in the bottom to produce alcohol. But to, in order to stop there being any oxygen in here, because we want fermentation to happen, we put a little looped tube on the side. The reason for this, this is the end will be filled with water, is so that the carbon dioxide that's produced doesn't build up here and cause this to explode. Instead, it just bubbles out. It means that the oxygen can't get in though, because if you want to produce ethanol, you need to be doing it in the absence of oxygen. Okay, so both of these are fermentation. This is lactic acid fermentation, and this is uh, ethanol fermentation. Just add that to my diagram. Okay, so what are the important things you need to remember from this video? Well, firstly, that we're breaking down glucose, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic respiration, we're always starting with glucose and making pyruvate. Both of them start with the process of glycolysis, where two ATPs are initially used, but four are made. If oxygen is present, then the pyruvate and the NADH will go into the mitochondria and aerobic respiration will take place, producing a lot of ATP. But if there's no oxygen present, then this step can't happen. And one of two things happens depending on what type of organisms it is. If it's an animal or some bacteria, lactate is formed by lactic acid fermentation. And the reason we do this is so that we can get more NAD plus and keep this reaction going. We're not getting a lot of ATP, but at least we're getting some. Plants and fungi, on the other hand, take a different approach. They produce ethanol and carbon dioxide, again, to make this NAD+, and we exploit this um, in the production of alcohol. Exam questions you could be asked on this will typically be asking you to either describe the process of glycolysis or to compare anaerobic respiration in animals or plants and fungi against animals and plants and fungi, or it will be to compare anaerobic respiration without oxygen to what is covered in the later videos, aerobic respiration. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you come along to tutoring. Have a great day.